So this material is called Smart Side T111 Siding. It's just under a half an inch thick, and it's actually an OSB material that has been manufactured to look like it's eight inch planks. And it does have a ship lap or a lap siding on it so that when two pieces get put together, it will maintain this gap all the way across. Now we bought three sheets. Each sheet was about $36.95. And uh, we're hoping to get both ends, the east side as well as the west side soffits completely covered with three sheets. It's gonna get painted the same color as our clear story frames and the rake flashing and ridge flashing from our roof. And that gives us kind of our two-tone theme that we've got going right now. After this gets painted, it'll get ripped down into 22 and a half inch sheets. So now I just got to get the paint gun set up and get these things painted. In case you're wondering why I'm going to paint these things inside, it's because outside it's really windy today. And frankly, everything in here is going to get covered up anyway. We do have some tarps put up just to kind of keep things clean, but actually all of this framing is eventually going to be closed in anyway. So any kind of minimal overspray, it really won't make a difference. So this paint is an exterior grade satin paint, water based from Lowe's. And what I did was I took a piece of our rake flashing with us and I had them match the color using their spectrometer. Now the first batch that I used on the clear story, I got that at Ace Hardware. But uh, I was just at Lowe's getting the T111 smart side and I thought I'm just going to give it a shot. The two piece the two uh, batches of paint are never going to be side by side to be see a comparison. So as long as the color is close and it was a very good match, um it should be fine. I don't know how thick this is going to be. I have some water to thin it down. So I'm just going to put some in and get a spray in. The first thing I noticed was the paint straight out of the can from Lowe's was much thicker than the paint straight out of the can from Ace Hardware. Even though both paints were exterior grade satin paints, paint and primer in one. The paint from Lowe's just required more thinning. So I got the first coat done. I'm going to let this dry, see how it looks, and if I need to, I'll hit it with a second coat. Okay, it's been about an hour, and this is how it looks after it dries. And I must say, it looks beautiful. I don't see any blotchiness. I don't see any unevenness. There's obviously no brush marks. But uh, I'm very pleased with it, and I don't think a second coat will be necessary. What I may have to do is do a little bit of touch-up after the uh, panel panels are installed. But otherwise, I'm real pleased with the outcome. It has a slight sheen to it, and you can see the texture that the panels have to simulate real wood. Now that the smart side siding is all painted up, I'll be closing in the soffit. Using a circular saw, I'll be cutting pieces about two feet long, four feet wide, and nailing them up to the nailers. This is the east side of the house, and there's not going to be any can lights, so I can just pretty much close this right in.
I got a small area that doesn't quite fit between the trusses. I needed to take off about an eighth of an inch with the belt sander. As you can see, as soon as I put up that last little piece of trim and it was painted the same color as the soffit itself, I changed my mind and went with the dark brown to make it less obtrusive and it was uh, it looks a lot better that way While I'm working on the soffit, Yvonne decided to try her hand at uh, working out a layout for the bottle bricks that'll be here on the eastern, uh, the eastern exposure. So what she's doing is she's basically just mimicking the triangle up above the non-load bearing wall. And she's then going to just kind of play with some ideas for patterns and designs. Okay, the first soffit is in the books. The soffit on the west side will have three can lights installed. So it's going to be a little more complex than this one, but it should be interesting. I'm heading back to the house. I just got uh, done talking to Derek, handyman Howlett, and he uh, gave me a little information about getting the cam lights wired up under the soffit. And I was lucky enough to get a tour of the house he's building. And if you haven't seen that house yet, man, you got to check it out. It is amazing. Anyways, so I'm going to get the cans installed, get them wired up, and then get the rest of the soffit finished off. But I got to head to town first and pick up a couple little things. And then we'll get going. Now that the soffit on the east side of the house is done, it's time to tackle the west side. Now the west side is also the entrance side to the house. And what we have planned are to put pot lights or can lights into the soffit. Now I'm entering uncharted territory because anybody who knows me knows one thing for sure. I am no electrician, but I'm gonna to try to force myself to kind of grow a little. Now I was just, just got back from a handyman's house and he had some extra cans left over from his his build, and I got them at a great price. Thanks, Derek. And he also gave me a little lesson how to wire them up and how to install them. So I'm going to see if I can do it. Now, the first thing to figure out is where we're going to want the placement. We have a total of five cans. We had originally planned on evenly spacing three across the front. But with two extra cans, I might do five. I'll see how it goes. I think once I get up there, I'll know what looks good.
I've got all three cans installed. We decided to go with three. It just seems like the appropriate number when you look at it from the outside. Each ones on the corner are two feet in from the edge and the one in the center is dead center. Now all I gotta do is get them wired up. I've got the first can wired up and it was just as easy as Derek said it was gonna be. And then I'm running the Romex here along this truss and installing staples. I'm on to the next light. This will be my first daisy chain. Sometimes you just gotta get the work done. And this was one of those days. The wiring, I daisy chained the three lights together and then brought the wire through the last truss running along the box beam, through the box beam, down the wall, to where a three-gang receptacle is going to be located right here. Today's the day we're going to put up the soffit on the west side of the house, and there are three can lights to deal with. So what I did was I googled the size needed for a six-inch can light, the size of the hole, and it came up six and three-eighths. Sounds like six and a half to me. So I just used my compass here and drew a six and a half inch hole in cardboard and that'll be my template. Now I took a piece of this scrap uh, soffit board and I transferred that onto here and then using a jigsaw, cut it out and it appears as though we've got a good fit. Now again, I know there's gonna be some play which you're gonna wanna have because once you get up there and go to install this thing, you're not going to want it to be such a perfect fit that it'll be a pain to get on. But that looks pretty good to me, and the light itself, the trim piece, will more than cover this. So we're in good shape. So, enough practice, let's get to it. I'm going to be marking this board from the back, only because it's easier to cut out on a smooth surface.
After the soffit material was installed and the can lights were all in place, I came back with a clear paintable acrylic silicone and went along the edge just to make sure everything was sealed up nicely. Next step is to get the actual lights installed. Those should snap right in. And I say should, but I've never done it before, so I'll do a practice run on the table before I get up here. Again, I picked these up off of Amazon. These were called Used Acceptable. And actually, when you look at them, they're in really nice shape. We ordered five. One I actually returned because one of these brackets was completely dented and busted up. So I returned it and actually ordered another used one. The regular price is almost 60 bucks a piece. And, uh, you know, I figure between we paid between 11 and $14 for them. And what's nice is they actually have the ability to be pointed so we can use it to uh, make sure it's aimed directly at the wall or to wash down the wall. But what I'm trying to figure out is, because I've never done this before, is how these hook in. And from what I understand and what Derek told me was, you just squeeze these hooks together like this. And I think what they're going to do is, if you look carefully in here, you can see there's two hooks here and here. And I think what's going to happen is these are going to go in All right, let's get up on the scaffolding and get this going. These make it pretty easy. There's no complicated wiring. This just has a regular, like a light bulb Edison end on it. And all you do is screw that right in to the can. So the instructions made it clear that you connect the two orange connectors and do not let it hang by the orange connectors. Easy peasy. Lemon squeezy. Squeeze these, speaking of lemon squeezy, squeeze these two connections together. Locate the hooks. And now you can see that it's hanging by these wire springs in the hooks that we showed you before. And now it's just a question of pushing this up and making a connection. The one thing I want to see is how is it going to... Okay, good. I want to make sure that when we angle it, it's going to angle back to the wall like that. So push it up. Hmm. Now I wonder if that has to be siliconed. It took me a minute to figure out, but the trick to getting it to sit flush is of course to have this band flush with the soffit material or a little bit above the soffit material. And that will allow you to get a good seal between the uh, the light itself and the can. So I can see that this is hanging down probably about a good eighth of an inch on one end. And I'm just going to get this can to sit up just a little bit higher. And I don't think there's a way of adjusting it. There's a way of adjusting it to make it go lower. But I don't see a way of doing it to go higher. But what I do see is a way of kind of forcing it up there a little bit. So all I did was with my gloved hands, I didn't want to cut myself on that metal, put a pair of gloves on and I just kind of pushed up on this rim until it's now higher than the soffit material itself and that should allow the light to sit nicely. Chloe's feeling much better. Thanks everyone for their kind comments and she's back on the job making sure no shortcuts are taken. 
As long as the can itself is higher than the soffit material, the light will snap in place and sits up there real nice. Okay guys, that brings our three-part soffit series to an end. I hope you found it entertaining. I hope you learned something. I know I did. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment box below. We get to them as quickly as possible. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.